my head toss, check my nails, baby, how you feeling? Head toss, check my nails, baby, how you feeling? Hello from theblogabroad.com and I'm super excited to be making this video because I feel like a major part of my brand and one thing I love about my Instagram and photography is the post-production, the editing. So everyone thinks that to make a good photo you only need a really good camera and a really good lens. The thing is work with what you have, whether it's your phone, whether it's a DSLR, a mirrorless, post-production makes up 50% of the final products of a photo and I am so excited to be partnering with Lightroom to show you guys how I edit my pictures to take it from this to this. Let's get into it. This is also really important. If you are shooting with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, make sure you're shooting in RAW. RAW allows you the most flexibility in post-production. I know it takes up a lot of space on your SD card, but trust me, when you're able to take orange to purple, um, it makes sense. The one thing I try to do with my editing as well is to pick a theme. I really love golden hues, I love the turquoise blue, and I love maroon reddish colors. So when I'm editing my photos, I'm always mindful of bringing out those three colors. If you look through my Egypt picture, all of those have a common theme of turquoise, golden yellow, and red. So when you're editing your photos, especially if it's for Instagram, try and think of colors that you really enjoy or the type of colors that really stick out in your photos so that you can highlight them when you're editing. And after this video, make sure you check out my blog post in conjunction with this video right here. <laughs> so you can see the written version. There's also a little slider tool so you can go back and forth between my photos and really see how they're edited down to a T. So first, let me walk you through the app. Lightroom Mobile is 100% free, so go ahead and go to your Google Play or Apple Store and download the app. So once you open it, it allows you to first go through and import some photos. So after you import the photos, click on one that you want to start editing. I love this photo from Egypt, and I'm going to show you guys what I did first. So I took it from this to this, this to this. Really cool. So you see at the bottom you have a few options. Don't get overwhelmed. We're going to start with some basics. So I'm going to first go into lightness. I think one of the things that makes a picture just pop right away is the exposure. So I took it to 0.70 EV. If you just slide it back and forth, obviously both ends are really extreme. So going back and forth here, I'm going to again drag it to 0.70. And you can see at the top that it shows you exactly where you're at. So that's what I like it at. Again, looking at before, it just highlights the sky a little bit more. Contrast isn't huge. This is if you want something to pop just a little bit more. Maybe you want to bring out the sharpness or the darkness in the blacks. Um, slide that, but use it very sparingly. Next, highlights. So what I've been doing lately with my photos, and I don't know why, um, but I bring the highlights way down. When you bring the highlights all the way up, you really take out some of the color in the photo. So I like to highlight especially the colors in the sky. So I brought it way down so that more of the blue shows. So you can do it just about like that. So shadows next, depending on the photo, the area that you want to highlight. For me, my face was a little bit hidden in the photo, so I wanted to highlight my face a little bit more um, and bring out some of the shadows that are in my scarf and my cheekbones. The whites, again, that's not too big of a deal. You don't have to touch that very much. And then lastly, the blacks. So you could play with, around with that. This kind of is like contrast, but um, again, it's up to you what you do. So that's the first section. Once I go through that, I get a really good idea of how I'm doing. The second thing I do is temperature. I always love to bring out like a golden hue in my photos. This is very much, um, this is what I love for my Instagram. So um, this really depends on the mood or the feel that you're trying to go for. But if you like that golden hue, if you like happy, warm colors, definitely bring that temperature between 10 to 20. I think that's a perfect range. You don't wanna blind out some of the other colors. So make sure you're not doing too much with that. So mine, I'm gonna take it to about 14. Tint isn't a huge deal. Again, these are extra things. You don't have to worry about tint too much, especially if you don't really have a theme in mind. For me, I like to bring out a little bit of the turquoise color in the sky. So I brought the tints into the green section just a little bit. Lastly, vibrance and saturation, they're kind of one and the same. You want to use them both sparingly. You don't want to oversaturate your photos. I think it looks a little bit elementary when you put too much color into it. So make sure you're being very, um, moderate with how much saturation you're putting into your photos. Next what I do is I go to this button called mix. 
I click on that and that allows you to basically color grade. You get to take each color of the rainbow and kind of adjust according to what you want each shade to look like. So for me, I'm, I'm always going to be touching the orange, the yellow, the light blue, and the dark blue because those are the ones that I want to highlight the most. So I'm going into my orange here and actually for this one I didn't touch the orange because I already warmed it up with the temperature but orange is usually the one for my skin tone or for the sand. So because I already like the shade that everything was, I didn't touch that. For yellow, I always bring the yellow about to that side. If I left it in the middle, that's what it would look like. So I like to bring it down a little bit closer to the red-orange color. The light blue, that's where you see how I change the color of the sky. So that's at 82. If I start it here or bring it all the way back here, you see it's a little bit more green. It's getting less green and more blue the more I bring it down. So again, you can control the color and see what color you're at at the top of the screen. So right now my hue is at 82. Saturation, again, you can play with that depending on what color you want the sky, but I'm bringing mine a little bit over there. Luminance, it's something to play around with depending on what you want. So here, I didn't touch it because I already liked what my sky was doing. Making sure the shade of the blue that I'm getting is like what I'm happy with or it matches my Instagram theme. So here we are getting into that turquoise area and then saturation, of course you can control whether you don't want the blue at all and it's always good to play around with it. Sometimes when you're editing so much, you're only seeing the final product. So make sure you're constantly checking that before picture and seeing, okay, am I doing too much? Is this too drastic of a change? You do want it to still look realistic. All right, so my saturation, I bring it a little bit past the 50 mark. And luminance, again, if you want to really condense the blues, you can just bring it down there if you want to space it out. You bring it there. I'm going to leave it at zero. Purple, hardly touched, but this is really just kind of for the sky. And then pink, um, barely touched, just some saturation and some luminance there in the sky. You could also zoom in, which is really nice because you can see, okay, did I change someone's teeth color? How does the camel look? Does the camel hate me? Um, it's just good to kind of check how you're doing progress-wise. All right, lastly, I do a little bit with the clarity. This is just to add that extra sharpening um, to the photo. I always do that. Split tone is, again, something really extra, but not necessary at all. You can see here, I barely touched it for the shadows in 10. When you do this, it adds just a little bit of color into different parts of the photo. So just watching how I'm changing here, how the, the sand is changing. I mean, you can really play around with it. That looks kind of cool, actually. Kind of mad I already published it on Instagram. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll play around with it. And again, you're checking before, you're looking at after, um, because you just want to make sure that whatever you're choosing, you are happy with. So I'm actually going to go with that. I really like how that looks. Gives it more of a warm feel. And there you have it. Then you just go to the top right, click the three dots, save to device. I always pick the highest available quality, press OK. It renders and then it saves straight to your Lightroom folder. It creates a Lightroom folder for you, very convenient, in your gallery. And so then you have it right there, boom, upload it to Instagram, share it to Facebook, whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, that's all it takes. Um, you're probably going to start off taking 20 to 30 minutes per photo, but once you get your routine down, it'll take 5 to 10 minutes max. Another really cool thing. Once you start taking the same type of photos, same type of lighting, you can go back into that menu, click the three dots, copy the settings, press OK, find another photo where you want to paste it, go to the top, click paste settings, and bam! You already got the exact same quality from the last photo into this one. Took you 2.5 seconds. It is really convenient. One of my favorite features about Lightroom. Other than that, guys, that is all I have. If you guys are looking for Instagram inspiration, obviously you can holla at your girl, Glow Graphics. You can always check out my account and scroll through and see kind of how my, my gallery and my theme has evolved or changed over time as I got more comfortable with Lightroom. Really excited to see some of you guys' results. And I do want to shout out a few of my favorite accounts for their galleries, for consistent themes, and just for quality editing. Aaron Outdoors, incredible photographer, great friend, and just an amazing eye for incredible aesthetics.
and Daddy OE, art and stadium photographer, and honestly, the reason I stepped up my Instagram game, I owe a lot to him. Dave from Jones Around the World, absolutely stunning gallery, very consistent theme, and Lee from Spirit of Pursuit, gorgeous feed, very consistent gallery, and just so inspiring to look at. And lastly, Yasheen from Small Crazy. She is so creative with the way she edits and it is so fun to look at her feed. So that's all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was long enough, but any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Remember, editing is not cheating. Photography is not a standalone sport. Editing is such a big part of it. It is enhancing an already quality photo. So don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Again, feel free to check me out on Instagram for more inspiration and all the accounts that I mentioned. Bye. Also, don't forget to subscribe because you girls gotta eat. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys. All right, let's be real. You're here to get your Instagram popping. I got you, girl. Okay. Okay, first let me make sure it's recording. Yes. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs>